I want to welcome you to a convocation like no other. In a world of social protests, in a world of pandemics, in a world of divisive politics, you are beginning a journey at Linfield University whose mission it is to help you learn how to navigate that world. We're excited that you're here. I know even this presentation is a little bit different, but I can assure you, no matter how different the delivery, how different the medium, we are committed to our mission of connecting life, learning, and community. And now, I want to present for our convocation invocation, Linfield University's chaplain, David Massey. I'm supposed to start with a smile, so I have to reveal it. Good morning. I'm an alum of Linfield College from 1978. And so as an alum, I want to welcome you to this esteemed university now, and a place that has not only helped me grow, but allows me to come back and use gifts to help others grow. It's true that we approach this academic year in a time of struggle, unrest, and uncertainty. I'm reminded during this moment of a literary work about difficult times that offers us some wisdom. It's from Tolkien's work, The Lord of the Rings. We read in those books the tale of a young hobbit, Frodo Baggins, entrusted with the fate of the world as he must destroy a ring of evil that if allowed to exist, could enslave all creation. Frodo confides his fear to his friend Gandalf, a wise wizard. I wish the ring had never come to me, Frodo says. I wish none of this had happened. Gandalf replies, so do all who live in such times. But that is not for them to decide, Gandalf goes on to say. We all have to decide what to do with the time that is given to us. End of quote. What will we do with our time in the context of COVID-19, racial, religious, and gender stress and prejudices, and economic uncertainty? That is for each of you to decide. But I trust your time and acquired skills here at Linfield will equip you to decide for healing, justice, compassion, and creative endeavors to meet such challenges. And so it is my honor to begin this year with the following prayer. Let us gather our hearts and minds for prayer. O God of the rising sun and the rising hope that comes with each day, that calls us from the slumber of isolation and beckons us together, bringing our diverse gifts of experience and education with us. We come seeking wisdom and hope, knowledge and direction. Source of knowledge and peace, as we gather to recognize the beginning of a new academic year, we pause reflecting upon how our experiences and discoveries of the goal of, and experiences of the past might inform and inspire the journey before us. Spirit of hope, we are grateful as well Grateful that this institution offers a community strong in grace and ready in knowledge. May we stay true to our mission, helping Linfield connect learning, life, and community. And so we are grateful for the rich tradition of this institution, and we celebrate with that tradition our history of respect for diversity, as well as academic and religious freedom. Therefore, we ask that as we receive the gift of knowledge, you might also grant us the gift of understanding, that we might respond with compassion and insight 
to a world in need of justice and unity. May our educational endeavors erode our walls of indifference to others. Help us to have deep respect for those who are different from us. Help our hands to be tools of peace, our heads to be instruments of reconciliation. Help our hearts to be avenues of healing. That we, in part because of this place called Linfield, might become vessels of hope filled with the elixir of compassion and knowledge that we might be poured out for justice and peace. In the name that means life and love, power and purpose to us all, we pray, amen. I want to introduce you to Dr. Ronald A. Crutcher. He's a national leader in higher education and president of the University of Richmond, an institution that I've become very familiar with because my son just graduated from their law school. He previously served as president of Wheaton College for 10 years. He was the founding co-chair of Liberal Education in America's Promise, the Association of American Colleges and Universities, AAC and U, national campaign to demonstrate the value of liberal education. He writes and speaks widely on the value of liberal education, the democratic purposes of higher education, diversity and inclusion, and free expression on college campuses. He also serves on the board of the American Council of Education and AACNU. Dr. Crutcher, is a professor of music and a distinguished classical musician. If you have not seen his YouTube videos or his performances, please check them out. He is a former member of the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra and several other orchestras and currently serves on the board of the Richmond Symphony. For almost 40 years, he performed in the US and Europe as a member of the Klimpera Trio. Please welcome Dr. Ronald A. Crutcher. Greetings, everyone. I'm so pleased to join you for your convocation celebration this year. And I am grateful for the opportunity to address a topic that has never been timelier, the enduring value of a liberal arts education. Among the bedrock concepts of a liberal education is the notion of stretching intellectually beyond the place where one begins. In my 43 years in higher education, I have never been more convinced of the need for graduates who can stretch intellectually or who, in the tradition of Linfield University, have the capacity to connect, quote, learning, life, and community. For in this moment in history, we are facing a triad of challenges inconceivable just a few short months ago, including the worst public health crisis since 1918, the most severe economic downturn since the Great Depression, and the most widespread civil rights activism since 1968. This moment cannot be met just by offering students narrow training for a particular job. Rather, it calls for preparing agile thinkers capable of creating connections across disciplinary, organizational, and cultural boundaries. As you embark on what I know will be an edifying intellectual journey at Linfield, I'd like to talk to you about two ways in which your liberal arts education will help you stretch intellectually and prepare you for lives of purpose wherever you may find your purpose in the world. First, your liberal arts education will help you achieve fluency across the boundaries. This idea comes from the biologist E.O. Wilson who in his book, Concilience, provides a compelling justification for liberal education. Wilson writes, and I quote, most of the issues that vex humanity daily, endemic poverty, ethnic conflict, arms escalation, overpopulation, and the environment, to cite several most consistently before us, cannot be solved without integrating knowledge from the natural sciences with that of the social sciences and humanities. 
Only fluency across the boundaries, Wilson concludes, will provide a clear view of the world as it really is, not as seen through the lens of ideologies and religious dogmas or commanded by myopic response to immediate need. The societal response required to overcome the novel coronavirus provides a clear example of the need for graduates who can connect knowledge across disciplinary boundaries. We need, for example, doctors who have not only mastered the field of medicine, but also have the humanist gift for compassionate and empathetic communication when comforting patients, especially at a time when so many patients are isolated from family and friends. We also need policymakers who have not only mastered the field of politics, but also have the scientist appreciation for empirical research over ideological dogma, for so many lives depend on it. And we need researchers who have not only mastered statistical modeling, but also have the artist's gift to transform data points into stories that speak to and illuminate our lived experiences at a time when so many of us are searching for meaning and purpose. So, as you pursue your majors and acquire ever more specialized knowledge, I encourage you all to take electives in fields you never even dreamed of studying. I also encourage you to look for connections between and across the various courses that you are taking. I am confident you will find that fluency across the boundaries not only allows you to build a meaningful life in which creativity and knowledge are worthy and beautiful pursuits in their own right, you will find it equips you with the empathy and the understanding to become agile learners who reflexively seek multiple perspectives and who strive to make a difference in the lives of others. Second, your liberal arts education will help you develop the capacity to interact with one another in honest and direct ways across divides from race, and gender to politics and religion. When I graduated from college in 1969, I believed that by the dawn of the 21st century, we would have consigned to the dustbin of history what W.E.B. Du Bois called, quote, the problem of the color line. That is, as Du Bois wrote in 1903, the problem of the relation of the darker to the lighter races of men in Asia and Africa in America and the islands of the sea. Yet, current events remind us that equity and inclusion are as much of a challenge for the 21st century as for the 20th century. In the wake of George Floyd's tragic death and the countless others who have preceded and followed him in death, we are reminded that all of us can and must do more to dismantle systemic racism. For just like COVID-19, it too is another public health crisis that jeopardizes the health and well-being of all of us. The good news is that you've joined a university committed to equity and inclusion, and it is likely the most diverse community in which many of you have ever lived. That offers you a tremendous learning opportunity. In fact, one of the best and perhaps last opportunities you will have to live and learn with people who are drastically different from yourselves. But you have to be very intentional about seeking out friends, classmates, and mentors from different backgrounds and cultures. Research has shown that an alarming number of people in the United States have social networks that consist solely of people from their own race, including 75% of whites, around 65% of blacks, and 46% of Latinx. However comfortable this kind of sorting may be, it is antithetical to the spirit of democracy, whose lifeblood is the energetic exchange of diverse and competing ideas. So, as you begin the fall semester, I encourage you all to take stock of your social network. Does it consist of diverse individuals in every dimension, or are you only surrounded by people of the same background and beliefs? If it is the latter, I encourage you to reach out to a classmate who is different from you culturally, politically, or religiously, 
and get to know them by asking questions and really listening to them. The purpose here is not to debate or win an argument, not to point fingers or lay blame. Such an approach will change nothing, perpetuating the vicious circle of recriminations that have become all too common in our very polarized society. Rather, I encourage you to strive to understand why individuals with different views think and believe as they do. These conversations can be uncomfortable at times, and they can lead to bruised feelings. But as I often tell my mentees, such interactions should be welcomed. This is exactly how you develop the capacity to navigate differences using a potent triad of energy, civility, and substance. In the process, your own beliefs will be tested and refined, and that will better prepare you for engaged citizenship in our pluralistic society. To conclude, you are living through a moment in history which has crystallized just how interconnected we all are and how individual actions can reverberate across communities and indeed around the globe. As you embark on your educational journey at Linfield, know that your liberal arts education will not only equip you with the skills to succeed in today's global economy, it will help you develop fluency across the boundaries and the civic capacity and social responsibility to address the questions our diverse and complex world will turn to you to answer. You are the next generation of engaged citizens and leaders, and Linfield University will prepare you well for the success that awaits you. Thank you and best wishes to you all. Hello everybody, I am Susan Ager Kippenhahn, the Provost here at Linfield University, and it's my honor to talk with you today about the tradition of the egg corn. When Linfield was founded in 1858, the college was built on 10 acres of empty land outside the town of McMinnville. At that time, a 100-year-old oak tree stood next to the single building that housed the president, the faculty, classrooms, and dormitories. This old oak tree became a symbol of Linfield for the next 150 years. Although the old oak fell in 2008, it lives on. The wood from that oak tree can be found throughout the college, where it has been used to create tables, podiums, even some of the paneling in Starbucks. And since 1859, an oak grove, a college, and now a university have grown up, expanded, and thrived. You've likely heard the saying that mighty oaks from little acorns grow. We know that say, saying dates back at least as far as Chaucer, a great English poet of the Middle Ages, who wrote a similar phrase in 1374, as an oak cometh of a little seed. But it was an American addition in the 19th century to add the word mighty. Truly magnificent mightiness can come from small beginnings. Students, today we ask each of you to take hold of the potential of your education and its power to transform your lives and strengthen your communities, your countries, and the world. Today you will take an egg corn for your own. In years past, students selected an egg corn from a bowl that was made from the old oak. And while yours will come to you individually, the meaning and tradition continues. When you graduate in four unbelievably short years, you'll be asked to bring your egg corn to the graduation ceremony, where you will return it to the university, just like the classes before you did. We will then pass that egg corn on to another new student in a future entering class. Thank you for taking hold of your future today, and thank you for choosing it to do, us, do it with us here at Linfield University. <laughs>